Welcome. The uh, LVM, May 25th, yeah, people started passing out. Uh, this is our first meeting. It's uh, a whole lot of new faces here. Uh, only a few are familiar, and that's good. We finally get a chance to meet each other and find out what it is that we have in common. Um, schedule's being passed around, and uh, we're going to try as best we can to stick to that schedule. We've got a fairly packed day. Um, sort of. Uh, we do have an hour at the right. end for overflow. Yeah. And yeah. Keeping on rough schedule is important, but we have a nice long break. There's a nice long break. Yeah. Yeah. All right, anyway, so these two gentlemen, Victor Mondry and Chris Ladner, are going to uh, give us a little bit of history about how we even got here. So the other thing I want to say is thank you all for coming. Um, it's exciting to me to see so much interest. And you know, when we were talking about this, we thought maybe there'd be 30 people that came yeah. to kept spiraling out of control. <laughs> um, I hope that this will be basically a in completely informal kind of meeting, conference thing. Um, so if you have questions during talks, feel free to ask the speaker. Um, um, we're not going to be completely strict with the schedule, but if something starts getting crazy and going way over, then, then jump in. Um, one of the things that I thought was really important is that we meet each other, and so and we did the survey, and that was also what you guys said. So we have breaks, and hopefully there will be lots of discussion about uh, the crazy random things that people are talking about, and the crazy random things people don't talk about, and <laughs> everything else. So, okay, that. I don't think it was a history. I'm going to see it. No. <laughs> you're part of this, believe it or not. So first I want to say thanks to Reed and Tanya and whoever else has helped with the organization of this workshop. I think um, it's been much more work than probably people realize because we've had so many more people than we, than we probably expected. Um, but so um, somebody asked that I give a, a short overview of how this thing of this whole thing got started. And I thought I'd take maybe five minutes to do that, and then I'm going to hand it over to Chris, and he'll give you the, the, the story from his point of view of how the company got started, which I'm sure is a little different from mine. But um, so Chris started graduate school with Illinois in what? Uh, in fall 2000, so August 2000, and he was my first PhD student. If you guys didn't know that. Um, and one of the pleasures of being a faculty member is. You get incredibly smart people to work with, and this is a very good example of that. <laughs> um, so in December 2000, we had our first conversation about LLVM, and some of the some of the things that I think are really important about the design actually start came up in that very first conversation, including using SSA form, uh, making the representation persistent so you could actually analyze it in link time and run time and other interesting things with it. Um, but at that point, it was just a conversation. It, really, it was not a single line of code. And then Chris was off for some of his winter break, supposedly, and he comes back in like two or three weeks. I think it was three weeks. And he says, can I show you something? I said, yeah. And he had the skeleton of the IR implemented. He had an assembler and a disassembler. I think he had a pass or two written at that point. There was no front end, so you couldn't actually generate code for this thing. But the germ of the whole thing was was actually working at that point. And that was in the first three weeks. And I think by the end of that first <coughs> summer, we had a back end for Spark. And then we, we, the next year, we wrote our first paper about it. and. Um, before I come to the release process and how it became public, um, the one thing I want to say about it from a research point of view is that I was excited about early on is this concept of actually being able to do a single compiler infrastructure that you could use at many stages of a program's lifetime. So this concept of lifelong compilation, I am still excited about. I think it's really cool. Um, in fact, one of the things that I'm happiest to see is that Several companies now are actually benefiting from that, actually using that. So people are using it as a JIT and probably doing some ahead of time optimizations of the code before running the code in the JIT are benefiting from that because you're doing offline and online uh, transformations and code generation. Um, there are companies doing very different things. Some of you are using it as a JIT, some projects are using it as um, a static backend. Um, again, that shows, and, and many are using it just as a mid level optimizer. Right? So, 
again, it shows the benefit of being able to do things at many stages of a program like that. So anyway, so in mid-2003, I think we decided that we should start working on actually making this open source and, and making it available to the public. And we had a, a, a meeting with one of the university lawyers, and he grilled us on, does this thing have any commercial potential? Can we, sell, can we get this license by companies for money? Of course, my job at that point was to convince them that the answer was no. <laughs> 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 Why would any company? There's a million academic yes. Why would any company care about this own software, right? <laughs> so I think we convinced them at that point. Although I don't think they were really being very, uh, very rigid about it. Um, so they already had this open source license, which is the license that we still use today, called the University of Illinois Open Source License. And that's what we decided to release against it. One of, the, one of the decisions we made very early on is that we did not want this to be a GPL style license for the software because we wanted to make the adoption threshold for this as painless as possible, as uh, easy as possible. And I think that's paid off. Um, it's probably something we should talk about sometime during the course of the day today. We have a few discussion sessions at the end. Yeah, and I think that in one of them, Maybe in the project management one or one of the other ones, we should perhaps see if people have feedback on the license and we'd like to see some changes. But so in October 2003, we made our first release. And I wanted to bring those first flyers in the but um, that was release number one. And it's now at 2.0, we've had nine additional releases since then. Nine additional, yeah. Um, so, and so, so some, things, some yeah. things have changed since 1.0. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fine that. You have all these back ends now, which you can have. <laughs> um, so, that's pretty much all I have to say. I think you should let us give us his perspective on that. Experience. I don't have a whole lot to add. Um, early on, it was basically, you know, co generators are scary, and I didn't want to be involved in co generation stuff. You know, weird people like Kevin and. <laughs> the great guys, people like, you know, they can worry about back ends. So, Vikram and one of the students picked up the Spark back end and started working on that. Um, and so they built the entire SSA based back end initially, when that's where machine servers and machine functions and all of these, the target interfaces, all this stuff come from. Um, uh, the original graphic on the guys showed up here and a bunch of other stuff, which inspired the later design, which was more target independent. Um, I was mostly focused on the optimizers and the front end. In the course of the years, I've rewritten three versions of LVM GCC, <laughs> which I know I'm pretty good at. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, the move forty won't be a complete rewrite once it's been merged. <laughs> so, uh, uh, aside from that, you know. Early on, Vikram was very insistent that we do research and publish papers. And <laughs> I kind of went along with that, and you know, graduating was important. And finally, instilled, instilled that graduating at some point would be good. Um, uh, but I, my true love was, you know, getting it real and building a foundation so that other people can do research and other use it for other things. And, um, I'm sure that that frustrated you. <laughs> so one of the things you guys may or may not know about this is when Chris was getting to finishing his PhD, um, there were a bunch of companies that would have loved to hire him. They kept asking me, so when is Chris finishing? And is he going to interview with us? And can we, you know, get our chance at this? And Chris only interviewed. He was only interested in a company that would let him work on LLVM. And believe it or not, that's a pretty small list of companies. <laughs> Microsoft Research for sure. Especially years ago. Especially, yeah, especially, especially two years ago, two and a half years ago. But um, so Apple, we've already been talking to Apple, and that was the only company you interviewed. Right? No, that's not true. I, I interviewed enough other companies to get competitive offers. And Maybe on the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you didn't go out and visit anyone except Intel. Uh, Intel. Yeah, so anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so, so I'm from here. Yeah. Apple is a good match. Yeah. And I expect him to So, the pick one was also very sad. I didn't come into academia. Not yeah. sad. I was trying to convince him that academia was actually a good career choice. <laughs> 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 
Ah, que a cidade é Lourdes.